and welcome to my channel. I am Tammy Ozturk, the designer of badbobbin.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little rivet pouch one. It comes in two sizes, up to you. If you have a 6x10 hoop and nothing bigger, you're able to make this in the 6x10 hoop. And if you have that little bit bigger hoop, that little, um, what is it, 12 by 8 hoop, this will fit in that 12 by 8 hoop and that's actually, this is the one we're making. It's uh, 10, and, 10 and a quarter by 7.8, almost 7, a little over 7 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to show you how to make it and how to put it all together with just rivets. It's sewn all in one. It's not a huge little thing, but it's a small little pouch. You can, you know, put your little wallet in there. This is the other one that we've made. The little, uh, we have a video on this one too. So this is your envelope card holder. So that can fit. This is uh, my personal one. I have, you know, a tissue in there. I have a pen, a lip gloss. It holds my full, you know, all these credit cards and money into the, you know, in here. And then a little bit of room for, you know, a little something, small key if you've got a little key, lip gloss if you want. And it closes up. I use this for a little crossbody, quick little thing to run to the store with. It can also be done as a wristlet. Um, I'll show you in the video what you need. It's one, one piece and then how you're going to assemble it with the rivets. Remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Subscribe if you haven't and ring the bell. You'll get more notifications of videos coming up. There will be some more designs done with rivets and assembled with rivets and all done in the hoop. No machine for sewing. It is done in the embroidery machine. So let's get on over to that cutting table and see what you need to make this cute little rivet pouch one, number one, version one, uh, by badbobbin.com. I'll see you over at the cutting table. All right, I'm gonna show you what we need to make this um, rivet pouch one because I may be coming out with other styles and designs. Uh, this does come in two different sizes. Uh, so we are doing the, the larger one right now, and this is for the larger hoop. This is that uh, uh, like eight by 14 hoop. What are we at? No, I'm sorry. So it's like about, about the eight by 12. It's like 11.9 by 9 point or 7.9. So that hoop there, and then I have the also one that will fit in the exact uh, six by 10 hoop. So if you only have the six by 10 exactly, this pattern will fit in it. So I do have one for you. And this is for that little bit larger hoop um, that everyone's using, that 300 millimeters by 200 millimeter hoops. So we just need um, very simple, not a whole lot of material for this one. This is all done in the hoop. And then you're gonna um, attach it and put everything together with rivets. So you'll need one piece of vinyl and one piece of felt. The inside lining will be felt. There will be raw edges. So with the raw edges, um, that's why we're using felt on the inside instead of fabric because it will fray on the edges. So the, the edges are hanging out raw. So you'll need an 11 inch by eight and a half inch piece cut of your felt and your vinyl. And I'm going to use this um, really pretty floral embossed uh, vinyl that I got from my punk broidery. So um, I'm going to cut a piece and I'll have the felt and then we've got rivets and I'm using um, out of this group this comes in like three sizes so I'm going to probably for this purse um, or little pouch I think I'm going to use the larger rivet. So this is, let me grab my ruler, the head of this is Five eighths, so the five eighths on the head and the shaft itself. Let me see here. Yeah, the shaft is also the five eighths. So the shaft and the head is five eighths of an inch. Not sure on the millimeters of this one. I work in inches, sorry. And then there's also a smaller size. So I think we're going to leave. Oops, sorry. Use um, the larger one. Actually, this is two sizes, not three. I just have three different colors. And I'm going to use silver because the strap that I happen to have has the silver on the um, hooks. And I'm using the little D-rings, which will be silver to match that. So I figured I'll just go ahead and use the silver rivets at the same time. And this, um, the, with the pictures and stuff, we're looking at this, you know, I'm taking, um, have some pictures and photos that will be included with the uh, design. And this is just, 
shy of, let me see, one, two, three, four. So this is a five eighths also. So this little D ring is five eighths. So the um, pattern, these are the little uh, D ring strap things. These right here are measured exactly for these little D rings. So I'll put that information in there as well. So I said that they are the little five eighths D rings. So we're gonna do that in our rivets. So it's, it's not, not that hard, just has a few things to do. I think the, the most difficult part is probably getting all these rivets down into the, uh, into the folds and stuff of it. So um, we have tear away or you can use um, cutaway. The cutaway will be seen between the two pieces depending on what you use. If you have a white liner, then you can get away with that white uh, cutaway if you'd like or interfacing. I'm using just a regular tear away and it will tear away through my seam so you won't see it, but it'll also give a little stability to the body of the purse. So it's not gonna be real flimsy. It'll give a little bit of stability to it. Um, I keep calling it a purse. It's really not <laughs> a big purse, so it's, a, it's small. And um, depending on your cell phone, it may not fit that fit cell phone, but I always keep mine in my pocket, but I will show you at the end what fits in the little purse once we get it all done. So let's head on over to the machine and get started on our Rivet Pouch 1 by Bad Bobbin. All right, we're at the machine to do our um, stitch out for our Rivet Pouch 1. And I've got my top vinyl piece and I've got my felt piece for the back. So I'm gonna run a placement first on my stabilizer. You can use a cutaway stabilizer, you can wear a tearaway stabilizer. You want something that's um, gonna hold up or, or depending on the vinyl that you're using too, if you want stiffness or if you don't want any stiffness. Um, this happens to be the uh, embossed floral from my punk broidery. Beautiful, I love this. I have every color. I just love this one from, from them. And I thought I'd do the uh, little rivet pouch in this one. So we'll stitch out the placement and then we're gonna place our vinyl on, our uh, felt to the back and vinyl on top. All right, so we have our outline on the back and the front. I'm going to now put both pieces, my felt and my outside vinyl. So the felt will be on the bottom and I'm going to put that on first so that when I tack the other piece, I, I won't have that trying to hang when I put the back piece on. So I'm gonna go ahead and use um, a tacky spray. All right. I do go outside now to spray. I'm in a different studio. All right, so I'm gonna make sure it's even at the bottom and the top, all around. And I'm gonna lightly smooth it out and turn it over kind of quickly and then now press it down. So this way I know it's gonna stick. And you can tell that we do have it on even. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and place my um, top fabric. And if you have a fabric that um, has a pattern on it and you need to have your top and bottom so you want your flap to, to make sure your flap is either going to look straight. So if that's the case then you want your, um, you know, you'll kind of look at it and figure, oh here's the flap up here. You're going to kind of hold it and then bring it down and say, well is that the right pattern? Is that the right way you want it? Or, you know, flip it over and see if that's the way you want it. This one has florals. So I think I kind of like this at the top on my flat part. So I actually will put this in a position um, for a top and a bottom. But then when you do turn your bag around, the back side will be upside down. So maybe use a pattern that's not posi um, positionable or has a pattern that not needs to stay top or bottom. So I'm gonna spray this as well. The top piece I don't need to spray um, as well or you know evenly or thick you know because I just it's on the top anyways it's just to give it a little bit of um, stability for positioning. 
So I'm going to just smooth it down, make sure it's all smooth in there in the hoop. And our next part is going to take about eight minutes with a 1000 speed per minute on uh, my machine. So yours could take a little bit longer if you have a single needle and don't have that um, 1000 speed. So about eight minutes to go, it's gonna do the outline and then it's gonna have all the little markings. Whoops, I forgot to, um, I forgot about something. <laughs> we want to, um, it didn't do where it's gonna be, but um, I will go ahead and add that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'll change the pattern and I will add this part in there. So the, the part that's going to, I'll pull this back a little bit. There's gonna be two strips here, which are going to be your strap pieces to, for your D-rings. Um, you can use them, you don't have to use them depending on what size uh, D-rings you're having. These D-rings are the um, small, uh, not even half inch, they're about, I think, three eighths. They're the small D-rings. So I made these for the smaller D-rings. You can use them, you don't have to use them. I don't like to use them with the felt on the back of it. Um, the stitching is on it to give it stability. Um, so they don't rip and tear. But with the felt, you're gonna have to try to go through multiple pieces of material with your rivets. So I recommend not using the felt on that part. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut out, kind of close. And you can always um, start the stitch and when it gets to that part, you can also stop your machine and pull it out and then see where, um, where you've already stitched and then you know how close you are um, getting to cutting this. But I kind of know, um, you know, I, how close I cut my purse, I, I, or you know, my bag here. I'm gonna cut it about one eighth, if not shorter to my stitch line. So I've cut that part out. Oop, that one I got pretty close. And I'm gonna cut this side out as well. So I kinda, kinda guide. You can also, another way I'll show you, is you can take your pen or pencil, whatever, and, and bring that line out. So as you're cutting, you know that that's where it's gonna be and you don't want to cut that close. You wanna be about you know quarter inch away to give it some Move this around in front of the camera for you. And then we want this part here too. So I see where that's at. That's about right here. There we go. So I have the little pieces um, cut out and then my little straps are gonna cut there. So, but I will in the pattern um, do it on the tack down, or I mean, I'm sorry, on my uh, placement line, I will go ahead and place a, uh, a tack down placement line for you to give you a better guide than what I have here. So, it's up to you if you wanna cut them off, otherwise you have to rivet through almost six pieces, six layers. So, all right, so here we go. I'm reminded you of that part. And like I said, in the pattern itself, I will have those guidelines for you. All right, putting it in, and we are now going to stitch out uh, the whole tack down with all our markings and places that we need to put our rivets in our holes. Here we go.
All right, we are done on the machine. So very simple, did great job. It's really nice uh, stitching, so it'll look nice on the purse when you, or the pouch when we finish it. And it did great, oh, just a tiny bit. But like I said, the pattern will have markings for you on where you, so you know where to cut out. But this is perfect because you don't want that bulkiness um, there, but yet I did a little stitching tab for you so that it will not um, rip and tear on you. So that stitching will help it. So we'll head on over to the cutting table and uh, clean it up and cut it out and show you how to assemble it. All right, we're back from the machine. So it's stitched out pretty nice. And we've got some threads to trim and singe. The, I'm gonna singe these little threads. Uh, most of them will probably be poked out with our hole punch but um, I'll, I'll singe them down anyways when we cut. So what I'm gonna do now is unhoop it, tear away all the stabilizer, and singe the threads. Okay, next thing we're going to do is uh, cut out our pieces, or so there's three. So this uh, little straps, which are our, our D-ring little loops, I'm going to cut those out, and I'm going to first cut them out with the scissors, and then I'm just going to um, use a straight rule, quilting rule, straight rule, and the rotary to get the nice straight, um, straight and even edges for this. So just cut down the middle, right down. So on these, I want a little less than an eighth of an inch, almost like a sixteenth of an inch. So we want this really thin, not too, too close. You want to have even on all sides. So and you want to make it just that sixteenth of an inch because these were made exactly for this D-ring. If you have a little bit larger D-ring, then you know go ahead and cut it a little bit larger. So this one, um, now that I put it there, I actually am a little bit too big, so I'm going to cut down a little bit more on it. So make it even on both sides, just a hair. Just a hair, like I said. So I'm gonna do this side as well, or this one. So this one we cut really close. This one is close, we wanna make sure. Get a little bit closer. And then the ends, we're just gonna cut. I don't need the rule for it, we just wanna make them straight. These um, ends won't be seen, they'll be on the inside of the bag, but you wanna get them close enough to the, just, just close enough, just like that. You wanna make them even. So when you go to measure where to put the hole, once we put the D-ring in, you're gonna fold them in half, like that. And you wanna make sure they're even on both sides at the ends. You want to make sure they're even there. There we go. And that way when we punch our holes, the hole is just exactly a quarter of an inch up from that. Okay? So when I punch the holes, I'll show you on the measuring of that. And the D-rings fit, fit perfect. There we go. So we've got our little loops ready and to go. 
So now I'm going to take my scissors and just go ahead and cut this out with the scissors. Um, I'm going to cut most of it all out and then once I get to this part here, I'll wait till the end. That way I'll explain a little bit on these parts for you when I do these. Okay, here we go. Snip my corners if you want to get in there and have sharp ones. It's up to you. A little bit closer. All right, so now for this part. <clears throat> As you noticed here on this one, I cut it and left a piece out. So you want to cut really close to this so that um, they fold over and everything overlaps properly. And then on this one, so I'm going to cut this one again. So there's enough room here, so you want to cut it really close without getting into the stitches. You can do it. I've cut really close to the whole um, design. So once I get it cut out, I'm also going to go in and just barely clip. You don't want to cut the, the threads, but you want to get it right up against it. You just don't want to cut the threads, but you want to get up in there so that when you fold it over, you'll have a nice fold. All right. I'm going to cut just a little bit out of that. I actually don't have my good scissors for that. All right, so on this one here, I'm going to get really close. I'm already close. This is less than, this is like 16th of an inch. This is less than an eighth of an inch. So we're at about a 16th of an inch. And one side's a little more, depending on how you're cutting. So this one's a little easier coming into it on this side. So as we come around, you're going to get to the end of it and then just kind of turn and I kind of fold back, keep my scissors up there close, and then cut really close to those stitches. So we're only doing about um, a sixteenth of an inch instead of an eighteenth on these. And then come around a little bit curve on the corners, and there we go. Cut it off. So we've got it all cut out, and uh, minimal scraps, <laughs> very, very minimal. Now for the fun part. This, um, I, I see a few threads hanging off, so I'm going to clip and, there we are, yeah, it's on the, singe them a little bit. All right, so, now that we have this all cut out and ready to go, and I just kind of pre-fold a little bit. So on the edges where we've sewn, whoops, <laughs> on the edges where we've sewn, I just kind of crease them a little bit where those uh, stitch lines are, just to give it a little bit of a fold, a little bit of a crease, a little bit of a pre-bend. Same thing with our side pieces. I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna fold them in, fold them in, and these little flaps here, they fold in also. There's no guideline for the flaps here. There's no actual stitch line here, but they do get folded in. So we wanna fold them in a little bit. So those are our stitch lines that we wanna press and fold and get them kind of creased in a little bit. That kind of helps us as we're uh, folding or as we're um, gonna go put our, put our rivets in. So, all right and time to punch our holes. So the rivet comes with, or the set comes with the rivet setter and it comes with a punch, this little hole punch. So you can use the hole punch and you need to have your hammer and you would punch them down and I would use a block of wood, which is what I have because it will go through your table. 
So instead, it can go through the wood. So you can do that with your hammer. And same thing with the setting of your rivets. You can use the setter in here, and you're going to use a hammer as well. A lot of noise. Or if you have um, the press, they also have hand presses. And this is the large uh, press. So I'm going to use, um, I'll, I'll use both, kind of show you, but it is kind of loud. Or I may just um, go off site and, and do them and then come back. But I'll give you an idea of how they're done. And then we also have one set of cam snaps for, um, for snapping it together. So I'm going to punch my holes. I have my holes set uh, for, <coughs> I'm going to use, I'm going to use the, uh, whoops, we're going silver, not gold, we're going silver. And you're going to need eight of them. So we've got three, four on one side, and four for the other side. We need eight caps and eight caps. There we go. So we are set with our caps and our studs. There we go. Okay. So we're going to punch our holes. I'll show you the first thing on this. All right. So this, uh, with the all in the hammer, I'll do a couple and show you what it's like. And then I'll just go ahead and use my hand tool after that, my hand one. So you're going to line it up on the hole. So I've got all the little spots for you to, to do. So you'll line it up on the hole. And then you're just going to hammer. And it should punch right through. I don't have my good hammer, but it'll it'll punch through. Let me go a little bit harder. I didn't want to go too hard with video. I'll punch it through. There it goes. It did go through. There we go. Felt is keeping it from going, but. So it does work if you have a decent hammer. I just have this little tiny thing, so I'll do the rest with uh, my hand punch. Right in the center, there we go. And then we'll, once we get them through with the hand punch and I go all the way around, um, you do not do where we're gonna put the snaps because that's, I'm gonna use the awl so that it's a smaller hole than these, all right? So, and if you want to go back through, it's up to you. Um, I'm going to take a roller to clean this a little bit. Uh, you can go back through again with your lighter and singe a little bit on those threads if you want. Otherwise, um, you don't really need to if they're not hanging out because once the rivet goes through and that's going to kind of cover and seal up those threads in the first place. So, the first thing we want to do uh, when you assemble this is you're going to do the little flaps and attach them to the bottom. That's going to be our first, the first one, is the little flaps here and they connect to the bottom. So they're going to fold up and then you're going to fold it in. So they're going to, it's going to stand up like that. All right. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And you can go either way. It's up to you if you want to do the uh, stud going in from the outside and have your little uh, caps on the inside. That's perfectly fine. That's up to you. That's kind of how I like to do it. Or if you want to go the other way, if you can't get your hands in to get the cap, you can go the other way and put the uh, stud through the through and the cap on the outside. And it's just a little snap. And you want to kind of do do one at a time so that you have some stability and room to to move around. So if we do. Um, 
let me grab my other hammer if I can find it. I did. I found it. Got my other hammer. <laughs> See? A little bit different, yes. I like my little buddy. This is my little, little guy. Cute. Anyways, so I have the, my better hammer, which is going to uh, give a little more power behind it. So uh, you're going to set the rivet, the head of it, into the divot on here. And you want to kind of move it around and make sure that it's seated in there. So making sure it's seated means that the head of it just pops and sits right into it. You don't want it off the side or crooked. The edge of this will end up creasing um, your rivet. So you don't want to do that. And you want to make sure that it's the proper, um, the proper divot, which I didn't, <laughs> almost, because I didn't think it sat properly. So this one has a double. So this is for the larger one, which is one we're using, and this is for the, the smaller one. So that's why I said you want to make sure it seats, and it wasn't seating properly, so I double checked. And there we go, we want the larger one there. And we want to make sure this is in the proper position. We're going to take our uh, tool, setting tool, and it's going to go right on the top of that rivet. So you want to kind of make sure it's seated. So I, better to get a hand press or uh, the hand one or the table press like I have and we're going to set it on top and then we're going to hammer it down. Give it a couple good whacks. Make sure it's seated. There we go. All good. It's tight. Perfect. Remember we want to keep creasing, cre keep creasing our vinyl to get it to fold right. So that's how we set with the setter and the tool and the hammer. I'm, um, oh, I forgot our pieces here. Sorry about the ambulance. <laughs> I'll stop for a moment. Studio got moved to a different place. Sorry about that. It's all windows in here and I didn't mean for that to happen. Okay. So our little loops, forgot to tell you about our little loops. So our little loops, we want to punch our hole and the hole, you can mark it if you want. Um, maybe I should have made little ones in here. Maybe I'll, I'll read, I'll redo the pattern and make little holes for you so you know where to punch your holes. But that punch on your holes, but it, it may be different because somebody may want these tucked in further or you may want them to stick out further. So I'll, that's why I really didn't put the holes because I knew there could be adjustments. So, but um, what I like to do is I've got a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch. So I took the ruler and I marked from my sew line, I marked the quarter of an inch and put a little, uh, little mark there. So I'm holding it really tight and they both line up and I'm just going to punch the hole right through where I put that. And make sure it's centered and there we go. There's my hole. So the rivet's gonna go right through that and then through our bag when we get to that part. But wanted to show you. I'll do number two. Line it up. I'm going to mark my quarter of an inch. And right. Quarter of an inch and in the center. Make sure they're lined up and punch it again. There we go. And just to keep them together, I'm going to put a little rivet through it for now. There we go. All right, so back to the back to our bag. Sorry. So I'm going to use the table press, and uh, this is my other one that I use that I have that I just have my um, my rivet setter on. The, my other one is my cam snaps for the actual snaps, and that's the one that I have on the stool with my foot press. So these ones aren't as, as needy to have that foot press for the extra power behind it. So I'm gonna do my other side now. Oops, something's happening, sorry for the ambulance. All right. 
and I'm going to put my good side through on the bottom, line it up, pop it through, put a cap on it. Heard it, it'll snap. There we go. And I'm going to set it in my press. Right there, you can see it. I set it in the press, everything's straight, and I'm just going to press down. Firm, one time press firm. All right, so this section is done. We've got our little uh, bottom part done. So the rest is just going to line up and fold it and line up and fold it. So the front of your bag is going to fold towards the back. All right, front towards the back. So we're going to start at the bottom of one. I'll do one side first. I'm going to put my main piece And this is where some twisting and lining up is, is going to be a little tough. And then I'm going to reach inside. You see the little rivet coming through? And then you're going to just snap the, the uh, cap onto it. So it kind of holds it, holds it where it needs to be. And then you're just going to form and kind of bring it together. And then that's the, the little tricky part is getting it into your press and then having it pressed down and making sure that it's going to press properly. You want it to lay right. All right. And I'm going to feel it, make sure it's seated. There it goes. It's seated. I'm going to kind of hold it tight a little bit and then I'm going to bring the arm down so that it just starts to uh, touch it and then I'm going to make sure that we're together in the right angle and I'm going to press down. Firm press. Here we go. And that's our first one. And that's where I said you want to make sure things line up so if I've got a little bit I can kind of twist it. Twist that part into there. I'll do my next one. it in the hole, put a cap on it, it'll snap, there we go, and get it in the press, make sure it's seated in that the bottom part, I'm going to bend over and look at it, make sure it's seated, kind of hold it down together, I'm going to bring the arm down a little bit, make sure it's seated still, wiggle it a little bit, maneuver the vinyl, and then just one little press down, there we go. And it's set too. Now for our part with our uh, D-ring. So I'm going to pull this back out and I'm going to use the, the rivet for the back, um, sorry, the stud part goes through the outside towards the inside. And this is where I said you're going to add, have layers. So this one will be a little bit tougher. That's why I didn't put any felt on this strap. So it sticks out. We're going to push it together really well so that it sticks out. I'm going to add my strap and really push it together so that, that it sticks out. And we're going to pop a cap on it. If it's not working for you, you may need to get a little bit longer um, rivet for it. But I did get the cap to snap on it, so it is holding. want to make sure our strap on the loop or the D-rings coming out so it's on the inside of our bag. Okay, It's holding well. I'm going to make sure it's seated in there properly. Bring my arm down again and give it a nice little press. So there we go. We've got one side of the bag done. I'm going to go ahead and just do the other two without any explanations and then we'll come back to the cam snap.
All right, here we go. We've got our sides done, both sides. It does have a little bit of a flare at the top, so you will notice that, that how the holes line up. It is more narrow at the bottom, and then it's offset to give a little flare at the top, so you have a little bit uh, wider, and then it's going to fold down. Now I'm going to grab um, my awl to punch my holes, and we're going to do the cam snaps. And I have the hand press for my cam snaps, and I also have my um, the bench press. So we're going to take the awl and poke our hole into the placement. We're going to do the same thing at the bottom, poke our hole in the placement. And we're going to do the first one, the bottom here, and have it come out. And then I'm going to pop this one in the top in our flap. There we go. And I do my snap so that the receiver is the female part. So the larger part is always the part that receives it. So even in the snap tabs, I always have this at the bottom. The tab part or the tail part or the flap part always has the male part and it's going to snap in. Plus it looks a little bit nicer too when you go to snap it or have it open. So here's our hand, hand press. We have it set in the bottom. And it's seated in at the bottom properly. I know it's dark, so it's hard to see. But I've got it seated at the bottom and seated at the top. And I have to use leverage of the table because I can't with my wrist very well. So um, I, I put this part at the edge of the table and then I press down with my wrist on the rest of it. So hopefully that's seated right. Here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and do this other one on my press to make sure so I don't messing with my wrist, but I just wanted to show you that it can be done with the hand. I'll be right back. All right, and it's all done. And then we're going to add our strap. Here's our strap. We can unwind it, make it shorter, longer, however you want to make it. I give it a little stretch, a little bit of a stretch to get it to uncurl. And hook it. And hook it. There we go. And it folds over. And our snap. So there we go. Our little rivet pouch one. So I might, um, I do have it in a smaller size. So this is. The larger hoop, then there is one for the exact uh, six by ten hoop, so it'll be a little bit smaller. So the little bit smaller one, um, I know it won't carry a phone. It will not carry a cell phone. This one will be a very tight cell phone, depending on which one you have. Um, thinking of other ways to make this so it's a little bit wider. Um, I am creating other rivet uh, pouches and purses, and actually a little, a little bit bigger handbag too. I'm, I'm creating at the moment. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribe so that when those videos come out and that product comes out or pattern comes out, you'll be able to um, see how it's made and know when and where to get it. So I'm going to turn these in because I like them going inwards. There we go. So I do have one um, that I've made earlier of my own. It's in blue with this pattern and this happens to be the pink one. So it's sealed at the bottom. Nothing's going to fall out of the bottom. The sides are sealed. It'll be a little bit better than this. <laughs> and uh, nothings they're not coming undone or nothing's going to come out of them. So this was our rivet pouch one. This is the larger size, the 11 by 8 and a half, or uh, sorry, the larger one, which is, this is about a 10 and a quarter by 8, 8-ish eight on, on the size. And the finish size for this, everyone's going to want to know the finish size. Let's grab our ruler. So the finished size of this pouch purse pouch is about six inches by three and a half inches. And the width of it, or the depth of it, is about one, one inch at the bottom, about probably one and an eighth, almost one and a quarter at the top. 
And let's see. Let me pop my phone in here. This is the uh, Samsung. So it just barely fits in, and you might be able to put a couple other things in there. I keep my phone in my back pocket, so I don't put it in my purse. I really don't need to. So in my purse, I keep my other little wallet, and I keep some tissues. I keep a pen. I keep a uh, lip gloss in it. So um, in the beginning of the video, I kind of showed what fits in this. But here we go. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Please subscribe. Ring that bell and you'll get more notifications when I come up with the other rivet type purses and bags for you. And just any comments, any things that you, you know, want me to increase, or I mean, sorry, any other things that you want me to, to come up with or sizes if I can, that kind of thing, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I will respond back to you. Uh, if you make this purse, please go to Bad Bobbin and show us the purse you made. Show us this little pouch that you made. This can also be a wristlet, which I forgot to mention. Don't bother putting this in, or you can leave it. Go ahead and leave it, tuck it in, and then we'll, on here you can just use a wristlet and just have it on the wrist. You don't have to, you know, you can just carry it like a bag. You don't have to have the actual strap. I use mine as a crossbody so we don't lose it. And then you can just pop a little wristlet on there and use it that way. So it works both ways as a full bag or as a wristlet. So thanks for joining me. And I will see you at the cutting table.